Alright everybody, welcome back to Siren Song Gaming. We're back with our Noob Dark playlist. This is episode 3. Here it's Harm again. Not that it matters, we're not going to hunt it right now. Anyway, so we are at Mystery Lake Cabin. The plan so far was to go swing... Do you guys hear that noise? That real low... Not that. They're gonna stop now. That sound. Anyway, that's a tarmigan. again. I can't make it. I can't roll my tongue. But that like tapping kind of sound, like roll, that kind of sound. That one. That one. Yeah, that's tarmigan. again. Um, I don't know where they are, but they're here somewhere. Um, and they blend in pretty well, so they're a little hard to find, but they might be over here. Anyhow, now that we're literally in a wild goose chase here, but. Plan is to head that way to go and see if we can find that memento hint that we found last episode. Um, and then we're going to head up to the Hydrodam and see what we can find. Um, life has been interesting for us so far. We have had squid basically um, a little over a week now. She is blending in very nicely. For those of you that don't know, squid is our new puppy. She is uh, 11 weeks old tomorrow, so she's still a baby baby. She's settling in pretty nicely, however, she is a handful. So I expected her to be a handful. She's a puppy, but she's even a little bit more than I had anticipated. Um, she's very confident, which is good, um, but it also means that she gets into things and doesn't have a lot of uh, self-preservation fear. So that's okay. Um... She'll get there. Um, but it just means that I haven't had a whole lot of time to kind of sit and uh, do stuff like this. So um, It's all good. Baby comes first. Once she's a little bit older, we'll be able to get back into the swing of things normally. Um, I still probably can sneak out a live stream in the morning on one of the days. Um, I just need to get up early enough to let her run around and play and tire herself out a little bit beforehand. Otherwise, she screams holy hell in her puppy pen downstairs. Um, we have her set up in a little puppy pen with her kennel attached to it, just so that she has somewhere that she can go potty. She's got a puppy pad. Um, she's got some stuff she can lay on in there, some toys. Um, just because we do go to work for, you know, sometimes six to eight hours per day, they're, they're left alone. Depending on my, my schedule and my wife's schedule, mine's pretty um, consistent, but my wife's, sometimes she goes in early and gets done early. Um, it just depends. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it, as much as I want to go explore those fishing cabins, if you look at the corner of my screen, there's one wolf, two wolves, right there, on the right-hand side. So, Mystery Lake has a lot of wolves, and we don't really have any way to defend ourselves. And it's foggy, so that might be an adventure for not right now. Um, we're also warm, or cold, so uh, we want to go up that rope, but I need to tuck in and make sure we don't get hypothermia first. So that's what we're going to do. I apologize if I sound a little bit tired today. It's about 5.45 in the morning. Um, I was just trying to give myself a, a break and get some content out this morning. Um, I've been able to play a little bit of single player on here. Um, or my single player run. But haven't really had enough consistent time or time that I felt comfortable trying to live stream. So we'll get there eventually. I miss you guys. But family comes first right now. We, um, where's the door? Oh, back here. I think this is the one that's always burned down for me. We, um, are just still doing potty training, which is all consuming because we have to get her out like every, like, it feels like literally every half hour we're getting her outside and hoping she'll pee. So, she's doing pretty well with it. Um, it's just a matter of getting her out before she thinks she has to pee. Otherwise, she's a baby, so she'll just squat on the floor mid play. So, babies are fun. Um, sometimes she gives us some indications, but mm, babies are babies. Can't really, can't really let them do anything. So she runs around the house on a house line, and which is just a long leash that I can step on if she's getting naughty, or um, you know, give her a quick 
uh, leash correction or something if she's being naughty. Um, I have two other dogs, so um, she hasn't quite learned social manners yet, so um, trying to help her learn that, like, jumping up in my big dog's face isn't really a smart idea. Or, you know, polite. Because he won't necessarily tell her every time. He waits until he gets really annoyed and then he growls at her. Which is normal social behavior, so... She needs to learn when things are and are not okay. Because my dogs will let a lot more uh, go with her than some other dogs. So we want her to learn that line around safe dogs. There's no clothes in here. I'm getting on lucky. There's a wolf over there too. That one gets me all the time, that one right there. Very cold out this morning. Having a hard time getting warm. Where are we at for water? Okay. And the reason we're ignoring our hunger bar, I know we've said it before, is that we don't have enough food at this very moment to maintain a well-fed bonus, so it doesn't make sense for us to waste a little bit of food that we're finding trying to keep fed, when really all we need to do is eat before we'll sleep. And we'll, get, we'll gain the little bit of condition loss that we have. Let's sleep for two hours and try to get warm. We'll regain that condition back um, over time. So it just doesn't make sense to waste the food at this very moment. There we go. Now we're nice and toasty warm. Hopefully it's a little bit nicer outside. Is this loaded? It is. Okay. I'm going to pull this out in case that wolf is right here. It's still very foggy out today. Okay, he's not, so... Let's head back over here. We'll see if we can go climb that rope. I do believe it got foggier. Fun fact, these trees usually point to something interesting, so um, if you see them, just take a, take a peek around and see. Typically it's nothing super exciting, but sometimes you find something good. I like this cave. So this must be the cave we were looking for with the memento hint. Maybe not, because there's no box in here. Hmm. I thought that rock was a box. Let's see. So if we go back into our... Is a... Mementos section. We can look and see what it actually said. We found T stash in that cave in the upper ridge. Okay, so we don't need to climb the rope. And there's ammo in it. Cool. So, let's, um... I'm gonna throw a sleeping bag down and sleep here a little bit longer. I don't like this fog. And we could use the rest still, especially if we're gonna climb that rope. So let's sleep for two hours. Lose a little bit of health, that's okay. I'm not ready to eat that food until we are ready to sleep for many hours. Hopefully it looks, yeah, it's clearer outside now. Okay. How over encumbered are we? Oh, pretty. Okay. Easy enough. So that was that cave we were talking about possibly stopping in. It's not there. But I think the rope is this way. This fog just won't let up this morning. I 
And this should be our rip rate around this bend here. Yep, there it is right there. Actually hiding behind that tree. See? Boop, no rope. Rope. Good times. Oh, goodness. All right, so first time for us climbing a rope on camera. Things you need to know about ropes. Um, right now, we couldn't climb this rope if we wanted to. And it's because we have too much things, basically too much weight on us. So if you try to climb a rope when you're over-encumbered, too encumbered to climb. So a couple things we can do about that. Since we know we're going to come back down, we're just going to drop this stuff at the bottom here. Actually, we're going to put that coat on. Drop that. Uh, drop those, drop those. So just a little bit of light inventory management. Oh, we're carrying a lot of food. Okay. Just check some of the heavy food on the ground. Things that can affect your wakefulness. Um, so there's certain foods that will increase your carrying capacity. Which is great, but there's also certain foods that will make you more tired. So things like the new stews. Um, I personally recommend eating them before you sleep for the night because they do make you tired. They give you the same bonus as, I think, green tea. Like the green tea packets you find. So, um, I'm trying to lose a little bit of extra weight because I know I'm going to be either more tired coming back down. Um, or we'll have some extra things, so you want to get yourself under a little bit because you're going to have to come back down still. But if you are just going up or down one way, you can get away with just, just hitting the bottom of it. So then you approach your rope. Make sure you haven't run recently. You want to make sure your stamina is full, like your run stamina, because that's what it takes off of. So then we start climbing. Um, there is something in the game called a crampon, which goes to the bottom of your shoes. They look like the, they're the little spiky things that Eskimos or people in Alaska use. Um, that was a really bad description, but to walk on the ice. Um, so you strap them to the bottom of your feet, and it makes your uh, climbing bar go down slower. So now we've reached the top here. Yay yeah, us. So let's go see what we can find. There is a prepper cache up here. So those of you that are familiar with prepper caches, they're basically, um, if you've played or seen any old games where people put big survival tanks in the ground, that's basically what they are. So I'll grab this. So this green maple sapling, I'm not sure if I've discussed it previously. You need this to make a bow. So I usually pick them up as I go. You just throw them on the ground and let them air dry like you do guts. And they are eventually usable for a bow. The bows cannot be repaired, so you have to make a new one every time. Looks like there's a cave here. see a backpack. So here's a nice green backpack. There's a Polaroid. So Polaroids are a good way to help fill out your map. Basically you go to the area where it says and then you use some charcoal in that area and it gives you a whole lot of map open. So we may or may not go and do that but basically you want to go to one of those big red towers like we were at before and that'll actually tell you when you're there that you have a Polaroid. So all you have to do is pull out a piece of charcoal and map it. And you'll open, like, a lot of this open for yourself. So there's that. Got some wood here. We'll take it. Nothing. Huh? So it must not be in this cave.
It said T's corner, so there might be another cave up here. Let's keep looking. It's probably on that side. But we're new, so let's just, uh, this is, this is what it is. This is us exploring, finding new things. I don't think there's any wolves that spawn up here, so I think we're pretty safe up here. Here, ptarmigan. I even saw some rabbits earlier. Hopping around. There's a rabbit right in front of us. I think that's a ptarmigan right there. Right? See him right there? Look, if I run at him, he'll run away. Right there. Ptarmigan. So, there he is. Dumb bird. Bye. So, similar to the maple sapling is the birch sapling here. Birch saplings are used to make arrow shafts for the smithed arrows, not the fire-hardened ones. So they're handy to pick up too. I typically pick them up as I go and then just stash them places and remind myself I stash them. Um, one birch sapling will give you three arrow shafts. Pretty nice ratio. Alright, this looks like it's nothing down here, so let's go up. There's some birch bark. Let's pick this up. I typically pick up birch bark every time because it's um, used as a tea that gives you a whole lot of um, restoration bonus. So if you drink a birch bark tea and then sleep for eight hours, you'll get a lot more health back. I don't know the actual figures, but it's a lot. This right here is that pepper cache we were talking about. So they look like this. And then you can open the hatch and go inside. Maybe there'll be something exciting in there. Looks like not so much for us this time, and that's okay. Let's see. Let's light this up for ourselves. Um, sometimes these have things in them. The game randomly generates whether or not they will have things in them or not. And even the ones that don't have anything in them, you can find you know, some food in them. Maybe a couple health items. Just stuff like that. And for those of you um, that, you know, they're lost or don't have your bed roll, even the ones that don't have anything in them typically have a bed in them, it seems like. So we're actually probably just going to sleep in here tonight. Um, Found T stash in that cave in the upper ridge. So many rounds left holding out on us. What other caves are there? Let's see. Um, we're just gonna look together real quick since I'm looking anyway. Okay, let's let's do that. There we go. So we are right here right now. Um, we hit this cave back here, but I didn't see... Unless it's not here. Tease. Because it opened up the cave here. Let's... Unless it's this one here. Hmm. It's a bit of a predicament. If we can't find it, I'll look it up after this. We'll just give it another one more go. 
This box is blended in pretty well, so we'll we'll take one more shot at that cave up there. Because it does say on the upper ridge. So it sounds like we should be in the right spot. Let's go look one more time. Otherwise we will abandon this mission. Until I can find it. This is what I say do as I say and not as I do. Um, that little walkway could have cost me a sprained ankle. Not a big deal, we have bandages, but a pretty annoying inconvenience. So anytime that red indicator comes up, you should just be a little bit weary about where you're walking. I'll see if I can see, have it come up again. But this one right there. So above my torch indicator, that red, uh, we'll put it on the tree. That red indicator shows that you're on an incline you could possibly break an ankle. I think it also pops up when you're on uh, steep snow. So. Okay. Is it just stashed in here in a spot that I'm not seeing yet? Sometimes they're really sneaky about where they hide these. We're going to consult the STEAM community here. Found tea stash in the cave on the upper ridge. So many rounds left holding out on us. Okay. All right. Let me try something. We'll be right back. Alright guys, so we figured it out. We're just in the wrong spot here. That's fine. Um, we were able to check that prepper cache, so we'll just head back down that rope. Um, I was able to do a quick search and was able to just, you know, basically type in um, memento hint. And then I just, you know, started typing what it said. And then immediately there was a steam form that popped up. So here's where we went wrong. It does look like... Um, basically what, I, what I'm finding online is that we are down here at the very bottom of the map. This hint, I'm going to eventually learn how to do this the right way the first time. This. So, we're here. We need to be back. The cave that they're talking about is this one here. So this is the one that they're actually talking about. Um, so we just need to finish going around and we'll go up here. Evidently, it's probably uh, flare shells, not actual bullets, but that's okay. We'll still go grab it so you can see what a memento hint is. So we'll get there eventually then. I'm not too fussed about doing it in a hurry now. I was hoping it was pistol bullets or something and... Alas, not so much. So. But that's okay. We'll figure it out. Sorry about that weird delay. I had to start. <laughs> and here's our rope back down. So you guys can see we're over encumbered again, and it's because we're tired. Um, we also have a couple extra items on us.
We also have that, um, we have those logs we just picked up, so we can drop, oh, we're way over, because we're tired. Do we have any coffee? So in these situations, if you have any coffee, coffee can help this. Doesn't look like we do. Boo hiss. Okay, let's see. We're going to do something that's not very smart here. So sometimes on these ropes, if it looks like you can work your way down safely, you can. This one is actually a pretty safe one to go down this way. We're probably going to twist our ankle, but it's better than dropping everything and needing to climb the rope twice. So if you can find a safe way to work your way down here. This one just has a steep drop at the end, so just take your time going down. We broke our ankle, that's okay. But I don't think you can go up that way, but you can come back down this way. You might be able to go up that way, I've never actually checked. This sounds like it's going to turn into a blizzard, so we're going to go get in, inside. This sounds bad. Um, I'm going to carry as much as I say you can carry. Lamb. And we picked up all of our gear. We are pretty over encumbered, but we're only going to the cabin that's right there. And she's going to complain because her ankle's broken, so... But we're not going to fix it, because if you just sleep for eight hours, it fixes it as well. So we can't run as well, I think, if your ankle is sprained. But we can't run anyway, since we're over encumbered. So I'm not worried about it, neither should you. We're going to tuck in tonight. We're going to fix up the new clothing we found, tear up some stuff that we have, get ourselves ready to head back up towards the Hydra Dam. In the morning. Getting this tired has a few things you need to worry about. Um, one of those wolves over there, if they decide they're going to jump us, there's a really good, good, good chance we're going to lose that struggle. So your success with a wolf struggle has everything to do with how tired you are and the weapon you try to use to fight them off, their, the efficiency of that weapon. Um, so far, it seems that the hatchet is one of the better items to use for wolf struggles. It tends to end them relatively quickly, and it does damage to them. You can, if you have a, a hammer in your pocket, hammer is rumored to be the quickest thing to stop a wolf encounter, but it doesn't injure the wolf, it just scares them off, so they won't go and die. With something like the knife or the hatchet, the hatchet's going to end the struggle faster than the the knife, and it's also uh, a pretty good chance that that wolf will go die in a few hours because you've injured it. So, while we are walking over here to this cabin, I need to turn my air conditioner off because I'm actually freezing. Hold, please. Um, I think we're going to go on this one here. I think this one has a pot belly stove in it, which will be great for us. Because we sh should make some more, just a little bit more water. And then we can cook up some of this food that we have to make it a little bit safer to eat. There's not a fire in here. Is there a stove? There's no stove. Okay, that's fine. Oh, we missed this. Okay. Yeah. Good thing we came back. So, things that are wrong with us right now. We are cold, we are tired, and we are hungry. We're going to go to sleep, and it's going to fix all of them. So, food that we have. Let's look and see. Since we do need to gain the condition back, we should avoid things that might give us food poisoning. We have enough to choose from that we can avoid the yellow foods. The yellow foods are ones that are, have a higher chance of giving us food poisoning. So we can have this zap energy bar. I think this candy bar should be enough. I think we only need about 750 calories to sleep through the night. 
take a nice drink. And this will tell you. So we have 745 calories right now. Sleeping for eight hours is going to cost us 480. So we actually over eight by a bit. And that's okay. Because we'll actually probably sleep for 10. Because I think we need to sleep for 10 to fill our bar. So this right now is an aurora. That's why there's temporarily electricity. The aurora borealis um, in this game, it makes the electrical items work temporarily. The other thing that it does is actually um, make the wildlife more aggressive. So I typically would say if you don't have a weapon, stay inside during these. Um, the wolves will attack you even if you have a torch in your hand. The only thing that will stop them is like LED lighting. So anything with a light bulb. Um, if you can find a light to stand in. Um, or if you can find a flashlight. They work at night. But we're nice and rested now. Let's take a look at our clothing. So we have this new jacket. Let's it's a, it's a, it is a new jacket. Let's look at repairing this plaid shirt. We should have enough light to do it. Good. So now it's at 65%. Let's do it again. So as we repair our clothing, it becomes warmer. So it makes sense to make sure that your gear is nice and tip-top shape. The other reason we want to make sure is if we do get into a wolf struggle like we were just talking about, something that's at low percentage can break and then you don't have it anymore. So, it's not smart to not take care of your clothes. So we failed that one, and we failed it strictly because of our uh, level, our repairing level. It happens. Especially early games, sometimes it takes two or three times to repair things. The way you can get better is just by repairing your items and dealing with it, or if you can find the sewing primer books, they also help. And we get sewing skill for successfully repairing things. So we're still a little over on our weight, and that's okay. Because we have a couple pounds of wood in our pockets. Let's pick up one of these books. We're going to make a quick fire outside. It's actually better to do it outside. You get a longer burn time outside on these fires than you do inside. So if you have the time, it's better to make the outdoor ones anyway. So we have an accelerant, we'll use that just to make sure this fire starts for sure. Accelerant, if your percentage is actually too low, it still won't work. I don't remember what the exact value is, but I had, I think in one of the other videos here, um, if that percentage chance of success is actually too low, you still won't um, succeed. I was going to make a pot in half, but I don't think we need to carry that much. Let's cook. Let's cook while we're waiting. Um, so our cooking skill is not good enough to make a bannock, which is fine. Let's cook a potato. So warm foods will give you a warm food bonus, which makes you a little bit, w keeps you warmer. Surprise, surprise. We can actually pass an hour here by reading. And let's read this fire skill book. Can't focus when you're that hungry. Okay. Let's do this. Let's eat one of these candy bars so we can read. So with reading books, you need all of your moodlets to be, at least, um, they can't be read. I was going to say full, but they don't need to be full. You just need to not be empty. Oh, I'm glad we didn't go anywhere. This feels bad. So now we have a cooked baked potato. So to get your cooking skill up, all you need to do is successfully pull things off the fire. Ready? One, two, potato. 
And now, we earned a little bit of cooking skill. This kind of feels like it's going to turn into a blizzard. Let's cook another one. Still have 40 minutes on that water, which is more than enough time for us to read for another hour. Because you get a, a grace period on the back end of it. Pick that up. Now we have potable water. It has 30 minutes left on it. You get about 40 minutes on the back end, depending on your cooking skill. Um, so now we have two warm baked potatoes. I oh, know that one's cold. But this one, see how this one says cold? This one says hot when we eat it. We get a bonus for eating a hot food. So, warming up benefit. Okay. To move in this or to not move in this? That's the question. I think because we're going to somewhere close, we do move in this. If we could try to take a torch, it's going to get blown out. But we are going to take it just so that we have extra torches. That one's no good. That one's no good. My wife just woke up, said goodbye, walked downstairs. Puppy's barking like a man at her. Because she's hungry. She can wait a little longer. They were out already, so... Okay, so that's our fire. Um, we can come back and pick these torches up and break them down and turn them into sticks. That's a nice higher level trick because you don't have to worry about um, firewood quite as much. We don't really need it. This does feel like it's going to turn into a blizzard. It's like a slow burn. So slow burn blizzard. Blah, blah, blah. We can pick these cattails up since we're here. You can see, even with that warmth bonus, how quickly our warmth is trying to drop. Because we don't have full clothing on. So we need to prioritize, at this point, clothing. Um, this is a map that we can hop in and out of cabins, but we're getting our butts frozen off. So um, This is one of the important things about early game. Is You'll actually find most people won't do anything. They'll just run from place to place looking for clothing. Which is kind of what we're doing, but I do want you guys to understand why we're doing the things that we do. So we're taking it just a bit slower. And we are looting and trying to find important things as we go. But this early in the game, this is just a... This is just a backer hint. So you can tell the, the, the backer hints, they usually say contributed by back or whatever. And the memento ones typically say memento hint on them. So let's search around in here. Driving gloves, not really helpful. Since the weather is so sketchy today, I don't want to do anything crazy. So. Oh, it actually looks a lot nicer now. Okay, that's fine. There's one final set of cabins across the ice here. And if we don't find anything here, um, I was going to try to go up to the dam, but I don't want to get to the dam and have to log off. So we might just hold that off for tomorrow. And I think I see a bear over there. I think I just spotted the bear on the ice there. Let's see if he's there. There he is. So right there is the bear. Um, and as awful as it is to get in wolf encounters, bears are even worse. Because <laughs> you just get mauled. So we're going to run to this here cabin. Bears are afraid of the flare gun. They are not afraid of flares. So if we can just stay out of his aggro range. And then we're just going to run inside if he starts charging us. Bears are no joke. Um, I have one of the streamers that I watch says that they don't care about the bear, they just want to know where it is. And that's very true. So you can, this bear here, if you have a rifle, you can shoot this bear from this right from this porch relatively safely and he can't get to you. The other thing is if you're not sure if he can get to you, you can run inside like a baby. 
Alternatively, if you go from one of those fishing sheds there, they can't grab you from inside. Um, so they'll just run around it like a derp and then take off and run. So Apparently it's possible to kill a bear with a flare gun to the head, like a shot to the head. Um, I don't trust myself to do it, um, and the consequences are too high, so I've never tried. But I would imagine it's possible. Let's do this. We'll wait for an hour. Nice and toasty warm. And let's see where he is. He's not in that same spot. Sometimes he goes elsewhere. Let's crouch so we don't draw attention to ourselves. Where is he? So I don't see him now, which means he could have gone back to his cave. Let's go out to this fishing hut here. He could also just be around the corner where we can't see him. So we are going to be pretty on alert. And we're going to high step it a little bit here. Because I don't want to get turned into bear food. Big old grizzly bear wins every time. Over a little old me. Actually, I don't know what kind of bears they have in Canada. It's probably not a grizzly bear. Um, they look like black bears too, but black bears are not that big. They're little. So, I don't know. Regardless, I don't want to get into a scuffle with a bear. Oh, I guess I should explain to you. This is a fishing hut. I think we've been in here. I don't know if we've been in one yet. So these fishing huts are nice. They have a fishing hole that you can crack up with a tool. Um, per the wiki, the pry bar is best. It takes a little bit longer, but it doesn't damage your tool quite as much. They have a little fire stove in them, and they have some stuff you can search. And you can sometimes find lures and lines on top. and They're a little hard to see. So just take an extra glance around and look. There he is. So we're going to hide in here. Because he can't get us in here. He's behind us. Sometimes you can hear them walking. Oh, he's over there. Okay. So he doesn't actually care about us that much. A lot of times if you can get out of their aggro range, they don't care as much. Oh no, he does care. Alright. Oh, he didn't care about that though. Alright. They typically do. So we load this. He's still pretty mad. Oh, there he goes. Now he's running. So just like the wolves, they'll take off like that. When they're scared. And he's, he's already reset. So he's not that scared of us. Which is fine. We are going to lose some weight, though. So we're a little bit too heavy right now. Oh, we have five pounds worth of sticks to drop. Most of those. I mean, if he's over there, we're going to cut back that way. Just get away from him. Because he's going to keep coming after us. Their aggro range is pretty big. And a lot of times with the bears, even if they're coming at you, you don't have to panic until they get close. Once they rear up on their legs is when you got to worry. Because that's when they really come after you. So... He's not really paying any mind to us right now, which means we're just going to give him his space. And you know, I was going to keep recording, but Mr. Bear says we should stop. Um, so, it's also 6.30 and I need to get the dogs up and ready so I can go to work. So guys, this is where I'm going to leave you. Oh wait, there's a memento hint right here. Good thing we came back. So, here's a second memento hint. There's the cache. Let's see. What did that one say? Since I didn't actually read it. Examine. 
Can't stomach the things, but there are plenty of MREs down there in the dam. The broken window room. Okay, so that one, I actually know where it is. There's the key for it. That one's inside the dam, which is exciting. We'll get to get that one in the next one. So maybe the next one will go memento key hunting, or memento box hunting. And then we're going up to the Hydra Dam anyway. But guys, thanks for hanging out today. Um, and we will see you in the next one. I appreciate all your patience with the puppy. We're trying our best. Um, I'll try to get some content out. I'm working from home tomorrow, so I'll try to get something out for you guys. Um, even if it doesn't get posted until later in the day tomorrow, just so you get something else as well. So we'll probably shoot a second video out of this. This is a little bit easier for me to time myself on. Than trying to do a live stream at the moment. So we'll see what we can get accomplished. Um, and then we'll go from there. Talk with you guys later. Bye guys.